back. Singapore will be studying the impact of rising sea levels on eight offshore islands, including Pulau Tekong, Pulau Bukom and Sisters Islands. National Water Agency PUB launched its tender for a risk assessment study today. Work will start by next year and is expected to take two years to complete. Rachel Tang reports. The Sisters Islands, a haven for marine wildlife and a hotspot for island hoppers. But by the year 2100, climate studies project that mean sea levels around Singapore could rise by over a metre due to global warming. The potential impact of this to both humans and nature is currently a big question mark. It's why PUB is looking for consultants to conduct flood modelling and economic risk assessments there. These will also be done on other islands. The eight islands were identified based on um, PUB's preliminary assessments of the exposure of the islands to rising sea levels and also the potential impacts of a flood to the developments on these islands. So um, the new risk assessment study will help us better understand the coastal flood risk to each island so as to plan forward and develop the appropriate coastal protection measures for them. Pulau Tekong is used by the Singapore Army for basic military training. On the southern coast, we have Kusu Island, the Southern Islands and Sisters Islands. The Southern Islands consist of St. John's and Lazarus, all are popular island hopping spots. Further west, Pulau Bukum houses an energy and petrochemical park. The nearby Pulau Hantu is a popular diving and fishing spot. Finally, Pulau Pawai and Pulau Senang are live firing zones used for military training and are off limits to the public. One expert says some of these islands partly help to protect the mainland from floods and erosion. If you have uh, waves that are generated by wind over the water body, these winds actually will hit the island first before the wave uh, propagates to the main island. So they do serve uh, a, uh, some uh, protective value uh, to protect the main islands from the storm waves. The study is expected to guide solutions. Experts say that more creative solutions might be needed for these eight islands. For example, here at Kusu Island, it's slated to be Singapore's second marine park. This means that as opposed to traditional breakwaters, floating breakwaters may be more suitable instead to ensure that marine life still thrives. Traditional breakwaters extend all the way into the seabed and may create more of a barrier to water circulation and marine wildlife movement. Pending results of the study, PUB says other options to protect these islands include vertical seawalls and nature-based solutions like mangroves. And for a closer look, we have with us Professor Adrian Law, Executive Director at the Coastal Protection and Flood Resilience Institute, Singapore, and Professor at the NUS College of Design and Engineering. Professor Law, welcome to Singapore Thank tonight. Thank you for having me. So, first of all, sea levels potentially rising by 1.15 metres within the next 70 years. How soon can we start seeing the effects of this rise and what could those impacts look like? Well, the... Rise in sea level will um, increase the flooding mm -hmm. uh, in the near coastal areas. Uh, the effect will be gradual, but uh, we will be able to see the effect uh, progressively increase over the years. Are we already seeing early signs of these impacts today? I think even around the world, you are starting to see some early signs uh, of the impact due to sea level rise and mm. climate change. And what, what do they look like? Well, the... The flooding, the, in, the intensiveness of the flooding uh, is, is getting higher. Uh, the area uh, that is being flooded is also is, uh, more uh, extensive mm -hmm. than before. And, and the rains uh, and compounding with the rise in sea level are creating a compound effect that leads to a worse uh, flooding in the near coastal areas. Okay, and if we look at this study, it is expected to take two years to complete. And once, once that's done, uh, will some of the eight islands require uh, action more than others? And if so, why? Well, I think the determining factors uh, will be uh, arising from this risk assessment study. They will explore the potential coastal protection measures mm. for the different islands. 
as well as the timeline for implementation uh, for, for these measures. And so the timeline for implementation, to, um, to some extent, will reflect the urgency for action. Now, I think the, the, the determinating factor would be the current conditions of the islands, as well as the potential impact on these islands due to sea level rise. So, so I think the, the, together, I think we will have a, big, a better picture mm. of what needs to be done. Were you surprised at all that these eight islands were specifically chosen for this study? Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I personally believe that all the islands in Singapore, the impact of, of uh, sea level rise on all these islands will eventually be studied. Mm. Now, these eight islands are selected uh, now uh, based on a preliminary report by uh, PUB, a preliminary assessment report mm. by PUB on the impact of uh, sea level rise on these islands. Okay. And th th uh, some other islands will be studied in the near future, uh, depending on the respective uh, agency and their development plan and their uh, future studies for synergies. Uh, for example, you know, Pulau Ubin mm. and Pulau Ketam will be part of a northeastern studies in the future that is together with uh, Pasaris and Pango. Uh, Samakau landfill will be studied by National Environment Agency as it explores the different development options for the landfill. So I personally, I believe that the impact of silver rice for all islands in Singapore will be studied. Mm, in the it is crucial to study all the islands across Singapore, yeah? So this is uh, the start of a bigger study, right? We, we heard from our reporter earlier, Rachel, um, about some of the creative solutions that may be needed for the first eight islands in this study. For example, installing uh, floating breakwaters instead of traditional breakwaters, uh, vertical seawalls, or mangroves, uh, how do you decide what's best for each island? And why is it necessary to have different solu solutions for each of them? Well, it, it obviously would depend on the site conditions, the environmental conditions, uh, as well as the uh, functional use of, of the island. So I think we, you need to balance the, the different uh, considerations mm. uh, for different islands. Each island is different. Some are more for recreational uses, uh, some are marine reserve, and some are actually uh, for defense purposes or industrial purposes. So I think the solution will have to fit the functional use of the particular island. Itself. To what extent would local communities or the industries involved in shaping these strategies? I'm sure PUB in time to come will involve the community mm. uh, as well as the industry together mm. um, to, to find the best solution for the different islands. Okay. Uh, you know, if we're talking about intervention strategies and methods here, right? But if no action is taken, what would be the worst case scenario to happen to our islands? Can any of the over 60 islands be totally submerged? Well, personally, I have not been to all 60 plus islands in <laughs> Singapore, especially some of the small islands. Um, but I believe that um, they will not be submerged. However, if we don't take any action, the area of the islands will shrink for mm. sure. Mm. And if they shrink too much, then they will eventually lose their functional values. And I think to, uh, we need to preserve these values for our generation as well as future generations. Uh, apart from the eight islands mentioned, which islands are at the greatest risk of being submerged, you think? Well, it's obviously those islands with a very flat terrain, mm. right? So, um, uh, personally, I, I go to Kusu Island uh, quite often, and I think when I look at Kusu Island, it's quite flat. So, it's definitely one of the islands that uh, will be uh, definitely will be at a higher risk of uh, being uh, eventually. Um, reduce in sizes if we don't take any actions. All right, let's hope we don't get there. Professor Law, thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, that was Professor Adrian Law, Executive Director at CFI Singapore.